Welcome to Electra Online. One of the most mysterious aspects of our existence is the fact that we depend on oxygen to live, and oxygen wasn't around very much at the early stages of the Earth. Matter of fact, there was virtually no free oxygen in the atmosphere when the Earth was first formed. So where did all that oxygen come from? Well, it's quite an amazing story. If we take a look at what the main constituents were of the early atmosphere, for the early Earth was carbon dioxide was king, there was lots of carbon dioxide, just like we see on Venus and, and, uh, and Mars. There was some nitrogen, just like we see on Venus and Mars, and then we had some small amounts of methane, water vapor, and hydrogen. So the atmosphere of the Earth looked very much like the current atmosphere of Venus and Mars, in many respects. But then the current present-day atmospheric content is that it's primarily nitrogen and oxygen, about 78% nitrogen, almost 21% oxygen, and some water vapor, carbon dioxide, and methane, and some other constituents. But notice how much things have changed, and notice oxygen was virtually completely missing in the early atmosphere. So where did it come from? Well, it turns out that life formed the oxygen in the atmosphere. And life utilized a very interesting molecule called chlorophyll. And here's a picture of it. It's actually quite complicated. There's two main forms of that molecule. There's chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B. The only difference between them is that B has one additional oxygen and two less hydrogens. So it took two hydrogens away and replaced with one oxygen. But essentially, notice that these molecules contain about 135 atoms in a particular arrangement. So they're not simple molecules. They're very complicated molecules. It has a magnesium atom in the center. Around the magnesium atom, it has four nitrogens. And then spreading out from there, basically some carbon chains with hydrogen and five or six oxygens. And that molecule is capable of doing what we call a particular photosynthesis. It's called a reaction where it takes carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and water vapor within the atmosphere and turns it into glucose and oxygen. That's quite amazing. And where do we find that chlorophyll? Well, chlorophyll is found in plants, algae, cyanobacteria, protists, and a few animals. So primarily plants, algae, and cyanobacteria. Now in the early stages of the Earth, in the first billion, two, three billion years, the oxygen in the Earth was very, there was very minor oxygen, primarily created by the cyanobacteria. So they were able to produce some oxygen, but the levels were, were less than 5% of the total content of the atmosphere for several billion years. That changed during the Cambrian period, where there was an explosion of life, a lot more plants began to form, and those plants contained chlorophyll. And the amount of oxygen in the atmosphere just skyrocketed. So chlorophyll takes carbon dioxide and water and turns it into glucose and oxygen. Glucose is the basis of life, just about of all animal life, because we turn whatever we eat into glucose. But it's got to be there somewhere, and the plants create it from this, from this photosynthesis, and they provide oxygen for us to breathe. So that one molecule was capable of producing two extremely essential things, oxygen and glucose, for us to be able to live. All animal life, of course, depends on that. That's why primarily we eat plants, and then those animals either eat other animals or eat plants. And so it all comes from the basis of life, and then we breathe the oxygen that they create through the photosynthesis process. It's just absolutely amazing. So you can see that the levels then continue to increase and was a big bump up right here. And at the very end of the what we call the Permian period, which is about 270, 250 million years ago, and when the Triassic period started and then the Jurassic period after that, then you can see that the levels kind of went back to about what they are today at 20.8%. It's estimated that at some point the levels were as high as 30%. That was also the period where the very large flying insects existed during the period where oxygen levels were really, really high. So photoplankton is really what the basis is of all life forms. So initially when there were no plants on land, the photoplankton which exists in the ocean and was very ubiquitous throughout the entire oceans, vast quantities of it, which is what started producing a lot of the oxygen in the water and then of course that went into the atmosphere 
and that's also the basis of the food chain of all sea life as well. So you can see that that's where it started, and then when then plants started moving onto land, you can see there was an absolute explosion of oxygen in the atmosphere. So why do we need oxygen? Well, it turns out that we live off of a reaction called the combustion reaction. It's really no different than what happens in the engine of a gasoline uh, automobile. It takes some carbonaceous product, let's say glucose, in this case, of course, cars don't run on glucose, they run on gasoline, which has a different kind of carbon chain, but essentially it's a, it's a carbon chain with oxygen, which then creates carbon dioxide and water vapor. So when we breathe out, we breathe out primarily carbon dioxide and water vapor because inside our bodies we took the sugars, the, the glucose, mix it with oxygen that we breathe in, and that is what then provides the energy for our bodies to be able to do all the functions that it does. So, it's just absolutely amazing. Not only did they provide us the oxygen for us to breathe, they then provided to the process of, of producing the oxygen what we need in order to survive as far as food is concerned. So that is the basis of just about all life on Earth, is to have that available to us. Without that molecule, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't have the oxygen, we wouldn't have the plants that we could eat and intake the glucose from those plants. So it's just an absolute wonder that we're here and that that molecule exists. And it's not a simple molecule, but there it is. That's the molecule that provides the oxygen that provided the atmosphere that we need to live from.